They both wanted uncomplicated, fast sex, and hooking up on the dating app Tinder was the perfect way to do it. But when Gable Tosti met Warina Wright two years ago, their night of passion ended in death. A drunken argument, fighting, and then a sickening scream as Warina fell 14 floors from Tosti's Gold Coast apartment balcony. That was horrific enough. But what drew further attention and condemnation was Tosti's unusual behaviour and apparent disregard for Warina in the seconds and minutes after her death. Last month, Tosti was acquitted of murder after a jury heard an extraordinary piece of evidence, his own smartphone recording of what happened. Tonight, Gable Tosti speaks publicly for the first time. And we should point out the subject matter is confronting and some of the language explicit. Hello, Dad. Um, I might have a bit of a situation. In the heart of surfer's paradise, a Tinder date has gone tragically wrong. Like, I was all right at first, and we, you know, had sex in bed, and then after that, like, she kept drinking. In the early hours of August 8, 2014, Gable Tosti tells his father what has happened. I, I think she thought it was like a joke or something, but she kept beating me up and whatever. I will fucking destroy your jaw. It's not fucking funny. Like, I, I forced her out on the balcony. <laughs> and I, I think she might have jumped off. 26-year-old New Zealander, Warina Wright, has fallen 14 floors to her death. I've been walking around and there's like a million cops around my building. I'm, I'm fucked. I, I don't know what to do. Gable Tosti was right to be worried. Police would soon charge him with murder. For two years now, he has maintained his silence, refusing to be interviewed by police, or take the stand during his sensational trial. Is there anything you would like to say today? But after walking free, he is now ready to tell his side of the story. Tosti's a pig! Any comments about all this media, all this attention? This is the final time you'll walk the street. You might see us for a long time. You must have some sort of relief about that. Nothing at all. Any comment at all that you'd like to make? So when that jury came back and said not guilty, that must have been a huge relief for you. Absolutely. It was, um, they, they took their time, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, they made the right decision. W were you worried? Well, it doesn't matter how innocent a person is. There's absolutely no comfort in being on trial for murder. Two years ago, Gable Tosti was 28, addicted to fast cars, women, and bodybuilding. Surfer's paradise was his sexual paradise as well. When you met Warina Wright, you were a bit of a playboy, weren't you? I wouldn't say playboy. I mean, I like, I like meeting girls. I just... I like meeting girls, and... Um, I, I noticed at one stage you boasted of sleeping with 180 different girls. Um, it wasn't intended to be a boast or anything. And um, those sorts of figures, um, you know, in this day and age, I'm not sure they're really that uncommon among a lot of guys. <laughs> well, you think a lot of guys? A lot of single guys. Yeah, it's not, not really a surprising figure. Gable Tosti really was living the bachelor's dream here in this glamorous high-rise block in the heart of surface paradise. The beach is just a couple of hundred metres that way. Bars and nightclubs on his doorstep. 
and girls, well, they were just a swipe away on Tinder. So there was no reason to think that the night he hooked up with Warina Wright was really going to be any different. Warina was, you know, she came across as nice and quite, you know, almost timid at first, and, uh, and we got along. After meeting in Cavill Mall, they went to a beer garden, but decided to buy a six-pack and go straight up to Gable's apartment on the 14th floor of the Avalon block. What were you drinking? Um, we initially bought a six pack from the bottle shop. Uh, we finished them and then we started drinking vodka. What sort of vodka? <clears throat> it was actually homemade vodka. Moonshine? You can call it moonshine, yeah. A night of drinking and sex followed, but things started to turn after midnight. At five to one in the morning, on that night, you hit the record button on your phone. Why did you do that? Well, the question isn't so much why did I do that, but why wouldn't you do that? Because I, obviously I used to go out um, quite a lot drinking. Um, I don't have the best memory when I, when I drink. And in this day and age, hitting record is, uh, I mean, record, recording your night out is as easy as pressing a button and leaving your phone in your pocket. Um, but what for? It's, it's more of a just-in-case thing because you're better off having something and not needing it than needing something and not having it. And Just in case what? Just in case, well, you know, the thing that happened on the 8th of August 2014 is a perfect example. Let's go back to that night and have a listen to how the events unfolded. You happy to do that? Yeah. Okay. Come here. Have a good, have a good night. I'm, I'm close. Don't close the door. No, no, no. Do you want me to walk you back home or? No, it's okay. No, come on. No, don't be like that. Just, just have a good night. So everything's going okay at this stage, and you've at, offered. At that stage, yeah. You've offered to walk her back home. Yeah, if she was uh, going to go home, if that was what she wanted to do, I, 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 I would have been all too happy to walk her back home. So everything's going okay? Yeah, I mean, I, at that stage, I sort of, I noticed she was behaving a little bit quirky, and that's all I thought it was at first. And That's your bag there, isn't it? Yeah, but where's all her shit? Where's m my fucking shit? Like what? At 1.35am, oh things started getting heated. Warina, clearly drunk, accuses Gable of stealing her phone. No, fucking... I will fucking destroy your jaw. It's not fucking funny. Okay, she's pretty angry there. Yeah. Why is she so angry? She can't find a phone. Um, I'm not sure why she got so angry like that, but we were looking for her phone apparently, and she couldn't find it, and she seemed to be blaming me for that, and I was offering to, you know, call her phone to help her find it. <coughs> and um, did, did you know where it was? No, I didn't know where I was. OK, but at the time, you know, as we just heard, she says, do you want me to destroy your jaw? Yeah. So had she already hit you? Um, at that stage, it was kind of what I, what I understood to be play fighting. But as you'll see um, throughout the night, it, it got worse and worse. What do I have to do? Oh! Ah! <sighs> I think, I think that was actually a rock being thrown at me. You Before caught one there, did you? Yeah, yeah, cl close range too. It was after 2am that Warina started pelting Gable with small decorative rocks that he had in his apartment. But I don't understand. Oh! What? But I don't understand, Dad! 
All right, I'll power down. It, it, even at that point, I was, I was trying to cooperate with whatever she had in her mind. Um, I didn't know what else to do. I was just, um, I wanted it to stop. Sounds like you've tackled her there. Um, I think we're just wrestling at the time. <laughs> no, 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 that's enough. <laughs> that is more than enough. <sighs> you've <sighs> worn it, you're welcome. At that point, you've I've, decided I've, that's I've, enough. I've, I've told her, you know, you've worn it, you're welcome. And I can't, there's a point where I kind of pause for a minute and, and thought, what, what do I do? You know, how do I sort this out? She can't be in my apartment any longer. This is fucking bullshit. It's at this point, the six foot three Gable becomes menacing. Threatening Warina with a choice of words the prosecution would later use to try to convict him. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna chuck you off my fucking balcony, you goddamn psycho little bitch. Just a horribly, horribly unfortunate choice of words without having any idea what, you know, would happen next. You're lucky but, I haven't thrown you off the balcony. Yeah, and you, I didn't intend that as a threat. I intended it as a figure of speech to say, you're lucky I've been so tolerant with you. Um, I know, but Gable, as it turned out. I, mean, I, I know how it looks. It's absolutely, you know. It's a shocker. It, it is the worst, you know, to even mention the balcony. It's the worst choice of words one could have used. These are the forensic photos of Gable's flat. Rocks litter the carpet. A telescope lays on its side on the table. Metres away is the telescope clamp that Warina grabbed and allegedly tried to use as a weapon. This is where it all goes horribly wrong. This is where I've basically bundled her up and started to carry her out the nearest door. Who the fuck do you think you are? No! Hmm? No! 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 You're trying to kill me, huh? No! Why did no! you try to hit me with that? No! Huh? just use the front door? Uh, you mean after I disarmed her? Whenever. You had multiple opportunities. Well, the, the first thing I, I did was try to make her walk out the front door. But you restrained her again? Af after, she, after she took the clamp. For the second time, you had control of her and you still chose not to use the front door. Why didn't you just use the front door? Because that's only a question that you can ask in hindsight when you have to desperately get someone away from you and separate the two of you and try and de-escalate de a, 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 an altercation. It doesn't come into the equation that that person is going to climb off a balcony and fall for 14 floors to their death. But, but Gable, regardless, you had control of her. You were six foot three, she was five foot four. How far is it between the front door and the balcony door? It's many... a lot, lot closer to the balcony door and it was wide open and it was the logical option at the time. <laughs> I would, but you've been... <laughs> Just 27 seconds after Warina Wright is locked out on the balcony, she falls to her death. The haunting final scream recorded on Gable's phone.
Did you hear her scream? I didn't hear it with my own ears, no. I only realised that there was a faint scream uh, that my phone audio picked up. Um, but your phone recorded that scream. Mm -hmm. We can hear that scream. Yeah. Through the locked balcony door. Yeah. But you reckon you didn't hear it? Not at the time, no. Are you, you serious? Yeah. No, all I saw, all I saw was her on the other side of the rail for a, a fleeting moment, and then, and then she was gone. Coming up, why was Gable so quick to leave the scene? I found a place that had some food. You understand why many people would think you're a cold, heartless, cruel bastard. That's next on 60 Minutes.